Hello YouTube and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Daniel Reynolds from Clubhouse Media and um, today we're going to be learning the basics of Maya 2012. Now, Maya is a really cool program. If For those of you that have never attempted 3D or are very interested in getting into it, I'm going to teach you the basics today of um, how to really get started in Maya and how to, um, you know, get moving around in Maya. So, um, you know, let's uh, let's do something. Today we're going to make a uh, sword in Maya, and I'm going to teach you using the basics and the rules you want to follow when working in 3D and creating mo uh, models and such. Modeling is a very important tool in the digital artist's um, tool belt, and you want to uh, make sure that you know it if you are interested in getting into this industry and applying for jobs. I know it's helped me uh, in a lot in getting onto um, APs and senior theses. Um, Advanced Productions is APs. Um, if you don't know about me, my name's Daniel Reynolds again, and um, I study at Chapman University under the Dodge College of Film and Media Arts. I am getting my Bachelor in Fine Arts in Digital Arts, and I am basically sharing my um, pain in the ass expensive education with you for free. So um, essentially what I'm about to teach you today is um, 3D Modeling 101, or Graphic 101 as it is in my school. So, why don't we get started? So what you have here is your ground plane. I'm going to pretend that you know nothing about 3D. If you do, this might not be the tutorial for you. Or um, if you do know about 3D and want to brush up on your basics, then keep watching. Um, and I can possibly show you a few things. So we're going to be, I'm going to be giving you the Mac controls today because I'm using a Mac. I'll try and remember the ca them on PC because, um, well, they're for PC as well. Um, first of all, getting the program. If you're a student at a college or a, um, a high school, I believe they will let high schoolers uh, get um, Maya. Go to Autodesk's student website and enter your student ID and such and they will let you download this for at least three years or something ridiculous like that. I'm using the student version right now but I've also used the full version stuff at my school and I believe I have the full version um, somewhere on my other computer. Either way, student version, um, it's great. So I keep playing with this ground plane, but you're probably, you know, you want to get started. So how to move around in Maya. You're going to use your mouse, obviously, and your keyboard. To zoom in and out, you need a scroll wheel. So do this, scroll in and out. Cool. Now, if I click and I want to move around, you see this, like, box, and this box is not going to, you know, make you move. It's just a selection. You need to hold Alt on both Mac or PC, and then mouse one or left click, and you um, can spin around the object. Um, if you hold Alt and right click, you can zoom in and zoom out. It's different than this kind of zoom. This is more of a like a lens zoom on a camera. Um, this is like a pan out and pan in kind of thing. So those can be used, and that's basically how you move around. Now, we're going to need more screens than just this, so we're going to go over here on the left and there's this big toolbar right here this is um we're gonna select all your tools but we're gonna start we'll learn um, quick keys about it uh, soon enough we're gonna click for view here and we can see all four of our views right here's our perspective right here's our top view this one's our front and this one's our side now let's get started alright what we're gonna do is we're going to start with basic box modeling box modeling is essentially starting from a primitive shape such as a box and moving upwards to create an object and I'm going to teach you as basically as I can so we'll go up here make sure you're under polygons up here so up in the top left corner of your program there's a slider click it and then select polygons this is just your menu so you can get controls then on this tab right here where my mouse is select polygons as well and you have all your shortcuts select the box Interactive creation will be already be turned on, and what interactive creation is, is basically what its name is. Click, drag to create a box. Now let's create a box about this big. Now we've got a wireframe of our box, and that's cool. We've made our first steps in 3D here, and that's fun and all, but we're going to need to probably um, be able to see it with um, a shader on. So you can click on this button here on your window. I'm sorry. Why, let's teach you the shortcut. Press 3. I'm sorry, press 4. 
There we go. Press 5. you got to move all the way up there. It's the shortcuts that always get to you after a while. Anyway, press 5 to be able to see your model. Or you could select right here, Smooth or Shade All. And you'll be able to see your model in um, with shading. Wireframe, shading. Or 4 and 5. 4, wireframe, 5, shading. Okay, cool. And you could do that for all the other windows, but I prefer not to because it's easier to see our object in... Um, in a wireframe mode in the other windows than it is for perspective. Okay, now we're going to uh, scale this down. To scale, you can go over here and select the scale option, the scale tool, and you've got your X, Y, and Z. Uh, y goes up, Z goes towards, and X um, the other way. If you know anything about math, I mean, you know, it's pretty simple. X, Y, and Z. So, this is X is red, and Y is going up. So we need to um, adjust the overall scale by selecting yellow in the middle. Then we're going to push this one in, or X in, and then Y in, and then drag Z up so we can create this um, our rectangle. Now right click on your object. This brings up our um, selection modes, and we're going to select face. Now what faces are just the front of the polygons. That's pretty simple. These are the faces. There's edges, which are these bad boys right here, and vertices, which are the, um, the points. Um, and I'll show you how to get to all that. So select face, select the top face. Now we're going to do our first extrusion um, in this program. So go up here to this tool, extrude, or you can go up to edit mesh, extrude. Now press W on the keyboard. W is for move, or you can go over here and select move. Now the important thing to understand here is that the extrusion has already happened. So you already have another set of polygons and vertices that exist. So make sure not to forget that when you move over. Because it looks like nothing happened, but in reality it did, and you can get something um, that is not preferable later on in your model. So drag it up on the Y axis. Now we have this other box on the top of this box. Not very significant, but cool and definitely a powerful tool in 3D modeling. Now select the two faces on the side of your box. Press the extrude tool again. Then this time select R on the keyboard for scale. W, E, and R are your shortcuts for W is position, E is rotation, R is scale. Doesn't make any sense, but they're, they rest right on your three fingers and it's convenient. Scale it out on the X axis, and you can obviously see we have a handle coming in here. Scale it down back again a little too much and we're gonna create a very basic sword today so don't get uh, too excited now we're gonna need to throw in some edge loops what edge loops are are just they're gonna wrap around the entire object and they're gonna create an edge and create more points for us to edit now um, something to remember when you're modeling is you really don't want tries or end guns tries are faces with only three vertices or three points hence the name try and end guns are something with five or more points on a single face. And you don't want that. You always want your, um, I mean, if it's, you know, it's always best to have your faces with four um, object, or four vertices because um, you'll run into problems, especially with organic modeling or modeling faces is what organic modeling is. Today we're doing a hard surface model, which is just an object. But it's really important to keep your edge flow, which is, uh, you know, how your edges and your faces look and your um, just keep everything good okay trust me on this I promise now we're gonna go up to edit mesh actually right click on your object again select edge and just click somewhere to get rid of the face we selected go up to edit mesh insert edge loop tool then click on a point where um, you can create a loop like this it loops around the object and creates some vertices and edges for us Click again next to it and drag it right about there. Then press Q on the keyboard to quit it. Now right click on your object, select face, and select this middle piece right here. This is where we're going to create our blade. Select space on the keyboard with your mouse over this window. That'll open up the entire window. Go up to the extrusion tool, press W on the keyboard for position and move it up. 
Now let's move it up only here because maybe we want to uh, extend the blade just a little. Right click on your object and select ver vertex mode. Then press 4 so you can go into wireframe and select the four vertices at the base of your sword. Then go to 5 to back to shaded mode. Press R and scale it on the Z axis. That way we can make our blade thinner. Now you'll also want to select the top here. I happen to have the face selected, but you'll also want to select the top and make it thinner as well. Okay, cool. Select face mode by right clicking and selecting face. Press W, or select the top face of your blade. Press W on the keyboard for position. Drag it up a little. Then press R for scale and scale it on the X axis. Press W again for position and keep moving it up. R again for a little more refinement. Now, we can uh, select uh, extrude, press W, move upwards. And this is starting to look like a sword. Now, if you press G on the keyboard, it uses the tool that you've last selected. So in our case, we've used the extrude tool last. Think G as in go. Press W again to move upwards. Then R for scale, scale it down on the x-axis. All right, we have a very, very basic sword here, but you've learned the basic principles of extrusion and how to deform an object and create something really quickly. Let's keep editing it to make it better. Let's go down to this hilt here, right click on it, and go to vertex mode. Select the bottom faces by clicking and dragging over them, press W, and move it upward. Press R and scale it in. Press W to move it up further. Then go to face mode by right clicking and going to face. Navigate to the bottom of your object and select the three faces underneath. Then press G on the keyboard again for your extrude tool, or actually just select the extrusion tool. Press W, move it down on the Y axis. Now, still in face mode, select all the faces right here. Then press extrude again on your keyboard or press G. And then make sure you select R and then select the middle button. Scale it down here, scale it here, and scale it here so it kind of looks like mine. And we've created a little bit of a hilt. Select the very bottom again, those three faces at the bottom. Press extrude and go down on the Y axis. Then press G one more time, right here, extrude it out, then select all the faces from this new extrusion we created, then select extrude one more time, and then select R on the keyboard for scale, extrude it out from the middle, press W to move down, and move it down. Then select the very bottom faces one more time, press W, and move them out. Now we have a very basic sword and hilt and handle. As you can see, 3D or Maya, I'm sorry, is a very easy program to navigate initially. And well, it, it'll still be an easy program to navigate. And I'm just going to move my blade up here. And this is just using vertex mode. Um, and once you get the basics of it, it's really easy to um, figure out. Um, I'm pressing 3 on my keyboard to view it in smooth mode which often sometimes makes your object look better and if you're gonna use a renderer like ment uh, mental ray um, which we won't discuss in this it will automatically put into this mode so you'll want to check smooth often unless you want your um, object to actually be really hard surfaced and I think smooth lo mode looks a little better for this even though it is really um, a rough object but we created a sword in you know a fairly, uh, fairly short amount of time now let's see anything else we would like to add okay let's um, do one more thing here right click select face and then select all the middle faces of the blade make sure not to select the um, 
the edges themselves. Then press extrude. We're using a lot of extrusions today, and that's basically what we're going to cover. Actually, press Z on your keyboard to undo that. Uh, you don't need to do Control Z, and make sure you select the very top as well in face mode. So now that all our middle faces are selected, press Extrude R, then scale it in on the X axis, <coughs> excuse me, and then the Y axis. <laughs> then scale it in on the Z axis. Or actually scale it out. <coughs> Excuse me. And that'll create a little bit of a um, curvature in our blade. A little bit of a dent. If we view it in three. Or let's view it in one. You can kind of see that it adds a point. <coughs> oh boy. Got a cough. All right. So we have just created a very basic sword in Maya. And um, I would show you more, but um, we'll save that for another tutorial. Uh, today we basically just covered how to use the extrusion tool to create something very simple and how to navigate in Maya. Um, in future tutorials we'll discuss more advanced things like compositing into live action scenes, motion tracking, and other um, interesting things like fur and um, rendering, and possibly animation. So um, you're learning as I learn. Um, obviously I know a little bit obviously actually okay a lot more than I, what I just showed you but <coughs> I'm learning a lot in my classes today and I'm running out of voice so I better stop here pretty soon um, my name is Daniel Reynolds make sure to visit clubhouseinc.net the website is going to be updated very soon and um, on the website there's going to be a about page with a donation page if you could uh, find it in your heart to donate just one dollar you could seriously help me get through a lot of um, my college classes, and it'll give me more free time to do tutorials like this. Thank you so much, and uh, have a good one. My name is Daniel Reynolds. Goodbye.